Hi there, and welcome back to Triplicate. And today we are going to move on with the Radical Synthesizer. However, we are going to look at the rotation sensor. The AS5600 Hall Effect Rotation Sensor. And I have here a Nucleo board. Uh, and we are going to connect it to that. And try and get it working so it's not specific to the uh, synthesizer build it's just really a video entirely about interfacing the AS5600 to a Nucleo and I've gone for the F446 Nucleo of the kind I used in the mean green rather than the F103 that I used in the mood light because these are twice as fast and they have the built-in floating point support and hardware and only four pounds more expensive and we're not exactly building this to a price so I need to get these nuts off okay let's get rid of that so we lift this off and here we have the magnet which hopefully hovers just above the chip which is there uh, and the first thing we need to do is uh, I guess get some wires out of the chip so I have here a piece of ribbon cable which we'll just thread under there and get wired on so let us get on and do that. Okay, so I have wired the ribbon cable on, the wires going underneath, um, and I've buzzed through with the multimeter, and that's the pin out of the chip, and these are one pin. The cable one is the one with the red. And that's how they connect to that and uh, 7 connects to both 1 and 2 because that's how you wire it up for 3v3 operation according to the data sheet and who are we to argue so uh, now we want to work out where we're going to connect this end okay so we need to know which pins on the nucleo we are going to connect our uh, little rotation sensor chip two. So um, the first thing we need to do is start a new project in Cube MX. Start a new project from ST board. We want to do okay. Uh, we want Nucleo F four four six. What a lot of nucleos. Four four six RE. That is us. Okay. There we are. So we want an I squared C and we will also want serial port to connect an FTDI module 2 to talk to the PC. Okay taking a little bit of time off camera to go through the available UART ports and I squared C ports and have chosen UART1 and I squared C3 which come out to uh, UART1 comes out to PA9 and 10 
which are next to each other on the chip Oops. quite a long way apart on the pin out there and I squared C3 comes to PA out to PA8 and PC9 which is that one up at the top there and that one there at least they're all on the same side of the same um, connector on the nuclear so I am going to uh, find some connectors to connect onto the nuclear board and do a little bit of soldering. So here's our nuclear pinout uh, with I squared C3 and UR1 and although they appear on four adjacent pins on the chip they don't appear on four adjacent pins on the connector. Never mind, these are they. So I have wired them there, there, and I've also picked up that ground for the direction, which although we don't care which what direction it goes in, it's got to be set to something. And this is an FTDI board. It's just an FTDI chip uh, UART to USB great easy way of implementing USB because you just have to deal with the serial port here um, so I'm powering that off the USB and here's transmit and receive onto here and I've just grounded that and the power come from the other side so that's this just simply wired up so there we go and it's all a bit of a lash up but there you go it's a pro it's a get us going prototype and if it starts falling apart regularly i'll just have to do something better uh, so let's see if we can get this up and running okay so i have uh, set all the cube mx stuff up and I've set the uh, workbench files up and got all the project up and running um, and I haven't uh, filmed any of that because the video just before this or maybe just before one before this um, it's a video specially dedicated on how to do that and for now we have we toggle the built-in LED and we delay a second so we just flash the LED on and off once a second just to prove the codes running uh, so should we get that set up first okay so first up we will power it up and this has test code in this nuclear which will flash the LED very slowly so we want to flash it on a second off a second so right so uh, we're ready to rock we've uploaded our code and let's go uh, yeah and that's turning on and off once a second so the next thing I'm going to do is try and get let me zoom out the little FTDI chip talking to the PC so we can get information out on what's going on in there okay so here we just have a little uh, test count which we're incrementing and then delaying a second and here we uh, printing it to a string with some more text and we're calling serial out which is a very simple function it just calls how you are transmit um, and passes it the start of the string and the length of the string uh, and i'm just using the uh, little green led to show when it's actually transmitting so that just blinks briefly now um, uh, so I've already uploaded that 
little bit of code into the Nucleo and at this end the FTDI uh, appears on the PC as a COM port so this we're just reading uh, the serial here and sticking it out on a uh, memo so if we run this little program come on run up it comes and it's at 17,000 some because I um, started this up with a computer first thing this morning it's been running ever since so now we can look at uh, seeing if we can get our rotation sensor doing anything and for that I think first we need to look at the data sheet okay so rather than delving deeply into all the I squared C stuff I'm gonna uh, I don't know just call one of these functions and hope it works so here we go how I squared C mem read um, so we have the handle to the I squared C and then we have the device address which is always 36 according to the data sheet we have the memory address which we'll look at in a minute the memory size and a point to some data and a timeout easy 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 um, and if we look in oh, here so that's what uh, I'm expecting it to be doing so the slave address is 36 and the memory address we will look at for the status register at OB and see what happens okay we also need to check what the I squared C is set up to and these are the defaults which look good to me as a starting point anyway and we have a little call to the function and this compiles so I think we can probably just run this can't we and see what oh no hang on hang on hang on uh, let's let's get that running so that's the old code that just prints and a counter out and we want to go back into here and that it's good well should we see what happens if we start it uh, should be yep thinks it's working um I need to go in for that so it says status is 165 okay that does have a look in the data sheet Which is not exactly what we would expect. We would expect those to be zero, I guess. Okay, well, I'm going to put the magnet on and see if it changes or whether it's just reading garbage. Ugh. No, with the magnet on it's uh, still 165 so something's not working so let's get in amongst it okay so we're just trying to read the status so this is a bit of code and that reads the status now we're printing out the counter number the HAL status uh, so this is what this I squared C uh, read function returns and the AS5600 status which we know is Duff anyway so let's have a look at that uh, 
Okay, that's good. So we'll start that and we need the monitor. So here we have the monitor, so we will start that. Okay, and it's giving us a HAL status of 1 and somewhere in here, oh yeah, I recorded the HAL status is 1 is HAL error. So that's not good. So, and I have connected the trusty picoscope to the SDL and SDA line so we can actually see what's happening on the I squared C bus. Okay and here we have uh, the S clock line at the bottom and then the SDA line at the top and if we look at that that is a start condition and then the bits are with the clock I, so we have zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, and that is the stop condition. Okay, so here is the data sheet, what it's expecting. And the slave address, it's expecting seven bits starting with one zero, not two zeros. So I wonder if it takes seven bits out of this number I've given it. Three, six. It takes the first seven bits starting with the most significant bit. So should we... Just shift that one bit to the left and see what that does. So we want to stop the code and we want to go run debug. Okay, let's start it. For a start, let's see what it's printing out. Okay, our status zero, that's worked, it thinks it's good. And it's printing out 19. Oh, well, I'll look at the bits anyway, it thinks it's now working, so let's have a look at the... Oh yes, we are now getting lots more data coming out. Let's see if we can... All right, well... If we now look in the data sheet for the registers, status, supposed to be these three bytes. Okay, so I'm still not sure we're getting exactly what we should be getting. Okay, so we are getting 19 as our status with no magnet. And if we put the magnet in, uh, you're taking my word for it here. We get 51. Uh, now, 19 is 16 and 3, and 51 is 48 and 3. So if we look at the data sheet, and ignore, where are we, status, ignore the three in those two bits. Uh, ML was set without the magnet and L and L and MD are set with the magnet. Yes, it's 48, 16 and 32. So if we zip down here to where it tells what, what though. So ML is maximum gain overflow, magnet too weak. Okay. So have I not got the magnet near enough to chip? 
but MD is magnet detected so it is actually detecting the magnet when I put the magnet on so are we going to give that as progress we're going to call that progress I think I am going to now try and read the angle register and see if we can get any uh, any angle out of it okay so we've modified our call so now our address is C which is according to the data sheet the raw angle which is the one we want we're not scaling that's a scale you can scale the value but we don't want to do that we will do that ourselves if we need to and uh, kind of hoping it increments the um, register value so we can just read two um, so here we go and it's now in a that we've got an array of two bytes AS5600 angle uh, which we will get and we will then print out so should we hit the stop hit the debug uh, we're good so let's hit go and see what happens well, that's me Angle doing something I'm off camera I'm gently winding this round and around hmm Well, it's doing something, but not quite what it's supposed to be doing. So, I spent what, in total, will be about a day off camera uh, trying to figure out what was going on with this and didn't do any filming because I ended up filming an hour and including about 30 seconds in the eventual video saying, uh, still don't know why it ain't working. Uh, so, I will just update you as to where I am now. First thing was the programming input which I had left disconnected, I don't want to program it, happily set any settings with the I squared C on, uh, on power up. And here in the data sheet it says program option, internal pull up, connected to ground equals option B. Well I'm not connecting it to ground but it definitely says internal pull up. Actually put a meter on it, nope it's grounded if you leave it disconnected so that was putting it in program mode uh, which means the analog p stroke PWM output wouldn't work because that has a different function in program mode uh, so fix that one connected the PGO input to 3v3 so then the analog output started to work and that was showing the same weird results where it would move a bit and then flip over to the other side and then move a bit more just as though it was reading something but god knows what um so then pulled the magnet off the board and started fiddling around with that wondering if i would got it completely in the wrong place and and found that if I, well I blocked block this up a bit so the magnet was near, was the bearing magnet near and not near enough to the chip but it was almost on the chip so, but I actually found by sheer coincidence if I put the magnet on its edge and moved it round above the chip well looky here it started working so I ordered the magnet 
well the, when I bought it, the board, the magnet came with it and they gave me the wrong sort of magnet. We want a diametric magnet and this is the standard north on one side, south on the other magnet. Uh, so this is the standard one type with the north on one side and the south on the other. Anyway I've stuck it on edge with a big dollop of hot melt glue and ordered off of eBay some proper magnets with north on one edge and south on the opposite edge. So I've also put an extra nut and a washer on here to space this board at this um, Perspex disc up because that's now taller because it's on edge and so let us put this on here and just power it all up and see what we have. No. Okay, so we are looking for the two angle numbers and the status number. Um, and that code loaded in, so we'll start that code up. Yep, I'm just looking over there to check the green LEDs blinking. And here we have the monitor, so we will start that up. And we will wind this round very slowly. And still not get some the numbers we would expect. Alright, back to the drawing board. Okay, so I think the problem is this magnet on this one uh, it's just not working it's most efficient on edge and it's a bit small and we have just don't have enough magnets so that little black guy is a fridge magnet or the magnet off a fridge magnet was stuck to uh, I don't know something or other which I've double sided stick it onto a piece of plastic uh, so we want to look at the status, which is too little signal, too little magnet, or magnet too weak, I think they call it. Uh, so we want that bit to go out and we want 2O to come on, which says it's got a magnet and it's happy. So if we put that there, yep, and we get FF. So if I turn the magnet, well, well, keeping it centered over the you see the numbers are nicely climbing up I've also changed it to print it in hex 16-bit hex so we're going round and round and it's going up six is seven Come on. 89A. Up to B, C. Oh. oh. It's wandered out of the centre of the chip again. E, F. I oh, don't no. know. I'll walk it again. Just trying to get that status to 2 0. And if I. Actually, turn it around that way, we get back to zero and we're up again. So, we have it working. I just need to wait for the proper magnet to arrive and I'll stick that to this, and we're good. So, we have at least got this little rotation sensor working. Uh, and we've learned, I guess, three things first, the address. Um, 7-bit address needs to be in the most significant part 
uh, end of the bite and the I squared C interface and we've learnt that we need to for definite set the programming pin high and we've learnt that people on eBay don't apply their brains to what they're selling and just send out the first little magnet they can lay their hands on whether it's appropriate to the job or not so always check if you buy one of these with a magnet that it's got the right magnet with it so uh, next time on this project I'm probably going to look at a different angle of the project um, but next time we're on this we'll get the strings working and hopefully we'll have the right magnet for this so we'll be able to get this working properly so uh, until then it is goodbye from triplicate Goodbye.